Well, first of all, thanks for letting me visit with you today. I always appreciate the opportunity to, to discuss ideas like this with staff over at ESDAC and, and other places, but your folks are always very accommodating and very thoughtfully uh, constructed their, their, their events, and this was exactly one of those, in my opinion. This leadership issue is an, is an ongoing issue for all of us to, to be concerned about, and just from my point of view, um, the whole idea of, of this kind of event enables the leadership to sort of continue to uh, set the vision for your district, your organization, or whatever. It continues to help you do that, and it helps, it helps to also communicate that to your constituents, whether that's your community, your, in our case, students and teachers and so on. So it's important, but I think probably as important as that is, just as important is it enables you to set an example. If the leadership in an organization doesn't set an example that, you know, not only do I think it's important that we participate in things like this, but it also is important that we send a message that we don't know it all either. We don't have all the good ideas, and there are lots of people out there that have good ideas, and so you learn from each other and you continue to learn. So I think it's a, it sets an example. It gives you an opportunity to communicate with your constituent groups. It gives you a chance to learn and, 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 on, and continue your learning. And so I, I just think in, in general, uh, that's what I gain from, from those kind of events. And so I'm always happy to be able to. And you can't do everything, but it's, you know, there are key things that I try to be a part of, and that was one of them. In our case, um, engagement for the, from the community, staff, and student standpoint is we do a lot of this, the normal things that other people do, things like we have, of course, various meetings and, and typical things that you do to, to communicate and engage the, the community and so on. But then we try to do some of the maybe less or, or different uh, options as well and to enhance that. For example, some of the social media methodologies that are out there today, uh, we try to we try to make use of. It's not always an effective way, but that's another way to to help communicate whatever it is you have in mind and engage them in in the conversation. Whether that's around student achievement, hopefully it's around student achievement, but more times than not, it's about other things like activities and whatever else is going on. But regardless, you at least have them engaged in some of the things that that are going on, and hopefully. When they get used to that kind of that kind of, uh, of uh, communication, or as another way to communicate, they will they will listen to things that you really have to say that are that are maybe um, of higher level of importance, or at least in my opinion, might be. So, so it's so I think it's I think we try to do some some of those kind of things. I'll just tell you that there's really, from my point of view, at the end of the day, there's nothing better than one on one or one to small group discussion and communication face to face. That's still the best of anything that we do, whether it's written or, or, or social, virtual, whatever, there's still no there's still no substitute. And so we still make it a point to do those kind of things as well. So it's a it's a plethora of things that we try to do. But engaging them is certainly important to us. So as you think about student engagement what are some key actions today's leaders can take to make sure that it remains a top priority in schools? Well, I guess you're saying student engagement in the education process. Because frankly, students are engaged in lots of things that are not necessarily related directly to students teaching and learning. So if we're going to take that premise that we want them to be engaged in their learning, and their education, then we have to change how we think about some of those kind of things rather than saying, and, and these are not new ideas, these are not my original thoughts, these are parts of lots of discussions we've had over the years about why students are bored if they are or why they're not engaged in what we're doing. So we've had lots of conversations about that. But some of the actions we can take are certainly changing or making use of the, of technology in their learning, and not because the sake of for technology's sake, not ne necessarily, but it's the mindset that they're going to use these devices. They're going to use something when they leave the leave our environment. It's not going to be an option. I don't care what they go into. They're going to continue to learn. They're going to continue to be required to learn. They're going to continue to have 
electronic devices of some sort that they're going to encounter. And so I think it's important that we sort of hand off those, um, hand off that responsibility for their learning to them rather than saying, we're going to control what you learn because we're the content experts and we know better than you do. That might be true. It might not be true. So I think it's important that we help students by that one action of saying, we're, not, we're here to learn together. Again, back to that example I was talking about earlier, we're here to learn with you. We don't necessarily know it all. And if, we, if teachers and educators in general get that figured out, it's amazing what happens in their classrooms. It completely changes how instruction takes place. 